What's that smell? It appears to be coming from Jessica Alba? It's alive! Reports of 3D's demise have been exaggerated, sadly, or at least postponed. One of our favorite movies from the 90s could get a sequel. We've got an interview with one of the stars of Captain America, a news story that makes me sort of happy. It should, but well, we'll get there. And Nigel's back with news from the multiverse. That's all on this installment of Slice. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Warning. Effects of time shifting may occur. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm Peter Mayhew. This is Trisha Halper, number six from Battlestar Galactica. Hi, this is Colin Ferguson with Sci-Fi Channel Eureka, and you're listening to Slice of Sci-Fi. Sliceofsci-Fi.com and welcome to another slice of sci-fi. I'm Michael Armenenge. I'm Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I am Tim Anamek. You are? Trouble. And on the end we have... Pado on Noah. And joining us, our special studio guest... Ben. Ben. Yes, hey, ben. ben. How you doing? Not bad. Thank you very much. So, um, uh, it was, it's, it's really cool to actually have uh, Colin Ferguson in the open <laughs> because that's who we're talking to <laughs> today. Absolutely. Yeah. So then why did... Yeah, well, I'm not sure why that. Yeah, I, just, I know why. I know why. It's because we're trying to promote our interviews and who we're talking to a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, sometimes we stack our interviews up to certain ways. And our fantastic news director, Michael Hickerson, isn't in the loop on those communications. <laughs> oopsie. Exactly. So that's a problem. And so that was it. Just a mere little oopsie. But really, it's Colin Ferguson, folks. Colin. Absolutely, right. Eureka. He, I, I he will his, be. He'll, he will be on next week. Yeah, next yeah, week. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have his email address, by the way, Colin Ferguson. Just FYI. Mm-hmm. Shall we get down to it? Positions, everyone. And now the news. All right, on to some news. Oh, folks, it's Michael Bay news again, of course. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So a lot was writing on the debut of Transformers Dark. Again. Looking to the film to help save sagging 2011 box office receipts, but the film was also seen as a referendum on 3D. So, had the film failed to live up to expectations, 3D itself could have been in danger of being scrapped by many high profile projects basically in the future. Well, the world voted where it counts, and of course, that being the box office receipts. Oh man! So well, it, well, okay. here's here's, here's the here's some the, yeah, here's some of the, and here's some of the numbers here. In the U.S., 3D ticket sales account for 60 percent of those sold for the opening weekend. Then that's this, lower than I thought it would. Well, and be. the figure jumps to 70 percent for the worldwide audience. Now, interesting. We've talked about this before that 3D may be dying in the states, otherwhere in the world. Not it's so much. Big, big, big. Really? So that means for now, 3D is off of life support in Hollywood, but whether or not it gets a second wind remains to be seen, and how consumers vote with their hard earned cash in the near future mm-hmm. will determine its true fate, folks. Uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Downwind. Well, yeah. Speaking of Transformers, many of us may be wondering who might replace actor Shia LaBeouf in the fourth installment of the series. <laughs> There's going to be a fourth? Of course. Of course with, with there the bank is. With the bank this one just made? Yeah, you can count on oh, it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The rumor currently floating around should make me happy, but it doesn't really. Sources say that Jason Statham could be Paramount's first choice to take over the lead role in the series. Statham has a connection to the films. His girlfriend, Rosie Huntington Whitley, took over the female lead role for Megan Fox for Dark of the Moon. But I just, he makes enough crappy movies on his own without getting sucked into the Michael Bay vortex of doom. You know know. what I mean? Oi, Sam, come on. I mean, I just yay him for getting (laughs) big, giant box office potential. The only way I will go see the fourth (sighs) is if they replace Shia LaBeouf with Gary Busey. (laughs) <laughs> wow, that's terrifying. Uh, I would, I would, I would pay, pay for that. A lot actually, to see that. in three yeah. D, do you really want to see Gary Busey in three D? Absolutely, no. absolutely. In no. particular, yeah, you're if stronger you than bowl, I. Co direct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Gary Busey isn't really in three D in real Gary life. <laughs> I think he's two. D, he's pretty much two D all the time. No, no he's three D in your face. Trust oh, me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, director Joe Johnson, who is bringing Captain America to the movie screens later this summer. But this director admits that for his next big screen superhero project, he'd be interested in revi- revisiting one of the earliest his earliest movie efforts. Now, Johnson recently said that he'd be interested in making a sequel to 
The Rocketeer. Really? Hell yeah. I'm yeah. good with that. Now, Jimmy? Jo- now, Johnson says the film was underappreciated when released, uh, but home video and cable have helped it find a loyal audience. Fair enough. And it could be a good time for a potential sequel. I'm thinking so. Yeah. What do you guys think? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm good I'm with totally that. I'm totally for yeah. it. You know, yeah. I like superheroes. Just had a, a huge yeah. uh, Rocketeer event over at the El Capitan uh, oh. about, about a week or so ago. Huh. And apparently it was huge. So they're probably pimping it, I'm so sure. It, it yeah. wouldn't surprise me that they would that they would want to go in this direction. May have given them a clue. Hey, we make right. make some money on that. Yeah, there you go. All right. We've joked on previous installments that now that Hollywood has forced 3D down our throats, the next step would be the return of Smell-O-Vision. And just as we <laughs> predicted, it's making a come back later this year as part of Spy Kids 4. <laughs> nice. The new process is being called 4D and smell o vision Aromascope by director Robert Rodriguez. The scents have <laughs> numbers, and when the right number appears on the screen, you'll know what scent to scratch and sniff. This is not new. This is old. Actress Jessica yeah. Alba, who's been the subject of some debate on our listener feedback show, is starring in the project. Wow. This That's isn't new. This is old stuff. This it's is been a done reboot. before. Right. Very not old. Not the mouthwash. <sighs> Should we bust into multiverse news, or do you want me to read this last little uh, piece of crap? Yeah, no. go, go ahead. Give us, what, what do you got? So when the red ring of death appears on your Xbox, you scream to the gods and say, why? Yes. <laughs> so now, though, you can save it in the cloud. Oh, really? Well, that was inevitable. Uh, um, So basically, last week, Xbox Live introduced online cloud storage for profiles and saves. Now, gamer tags are no longer restricted to a single Xbox 360 system and can be accessed from multiple consoles, according to Eurogamer. Interesting. Now, it was announced at E3 in 2011, Xbox Live will be able to store all personal data online, including game saves as part of the update that happened last year. How about downloadable or later content? Year. Uh, no. You're still okay. screwed. Yeah. <sighs> All righty. Let's, let's, let's get some more news. Do some. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, this is Nigel Blackwood. We are in orbit around New Caprica to witness the annual Pyramid Tournament. This year is set to be a very exciting... Wait, wait just a moment. There, there seems to be trouble back home. Quick, set course for Earth. Use the new transwarp drive. That's our cue, people. Their signal's jammed. We're on in five. When other news teams are still en route, we are already there. This is the FTL News. Setting a new standard for intergalactic journalism, Anchorman Lance Neutron. Good evening, I'm Lance Neutron, and this is an FTL News exclusive. We've received reports from across the globe of strange lights in the sky. The FTL News has just learned that the lights are actually explosions from an epic space battle just outside Earth's atmosphere. Here with more is our state-of-the-art fembot, Betty One. Good evening, Lance. I'm reporting from the surface of the moon, where I have learned that about 30 minutes ago, a large alien invasion force penetrated the Earth's satellite defenses, only to find that two other alien forces chose the same day to invade. What we're witnessing now is a frenzied three-way battle to see who gets to ravish the innocent and defenseless planet Earth. Thanks, Betty. And you'll let us know if there's any new developments? Oh, yes. (laughs) Uh, We're back on the air. Oh, uh, right. I'm being told we have the leader of one of the invasion forces on the con. Sir, can you hear me? Sir, I am the queen and mother to the Imperial Hive, you foul meat monkey. My sincere apologies, your highness. We just wanted to ask why you've decided to invade Earth today. No one questions the will of the Imperial Queen. We take whatever... Wait a minute, did you say Earth? Yes, of course. You're battling over who gets to invade Earth, aren't you? I knew I should have taken that left turn in Alpha Centauri. Earth? Ugh. I mean, we're hungry, but not that hungry. Return to me, my drones. I'm calling off the invasion. Well, that just leaves two invasion forces. Betty, how goes the battle? It came to an explosive end, and all that's left now are smoldering remains. Oh, wow. I'm sorry I missed that. Well, three invasion forces... 
Hello, this is Nigel Blackwood, and I've just received word that an alien invasion uh, force Nigel. is headed for Earth. Uh, and it looks like... N- N- Nigel. What? Hi, Nigel. Hello, Neutron. They destroyed each other, Earth is safe, yada yada, we took care of it. Oh, I see. Nigel Blackwood, everyone. He's a classic. My grandfather used to listen to him every week. Well, that's the news, and we take you back to our new affiliate in Draco Vista, Arizona. At Carina Press, we know that sci-fi can be sexy. Our ebooks are taking futuristic adventure to the next level. After all, the phrase opposites attract takes on a whole new meaning when astronauts and aliens make a connection. And passion in the midst of action does add a certain urgency to any interworld encounter. Discover how sexy the future can be at KarinaPress.com today. And welcome back to more of Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael Herman and Gay. I'm Brian Brown. And I'm Sam Roberts. And today, folks, we are just pleased as punch to have with us <laughs> Colin Ferguson again, folks. He's in this little show called Eureka that we've been raving about forever and a day. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show, Colin. Well, thank you very much. Not a problem. It's always fun talking to our favorite Eureka Sheriff. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, uh, gosh, where do we start? I mean, oh. uh, we dogpiled Jamie, and now everybody, all our, most of our listeners know, we dogpiled Jamie last year a lot, and especially okay. with all of the changes that happened this mm-hmm. last uh, beginning of the season. And so now it's time for us to dogpile on you. <laughs> well, fair enough. Fair, fair. So I guess the first thing to do is, as an actor, this must have been a, a nice challenge and also a very nice surprise for you. Yeah, it was great. I mean, you know, we sort of found ourselves in season two and three, you know, sort of barfing through stuff. And it it was like we hadn't really found our footing. And then uh, Jamie and Bruce took over the reins, I guess, season four. And we all of a sudden everything sort of clicked. And like we had the reboot, the 1947 reboot, which was all last season. And uh, it's sort of it's gone from there. Like we've gotten more complicated and we're doing the best stuff that we've done right now. The stuff we're shooting right now, you're not going to see until... I guess next summer. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's, it just continues along the same thing. And, and not only sort of are the, are the, are the scripts better and, and, you know, the stories are better, but the cat, I mean, God bless the recession. We have like, we get Felicia day in mm-hmm. for most, of the, most of the season. We have Will Wheaton in for most of the season. We get Wallace Shawn. We get, um, who else is coming in? Dave Foley comes in oh, for yeah. a couple, like just cr- crazy guest stars. So it's been, it's been nice. Feels like we're on the air. It is fantastic uh, where this show is going. Uh, I, I guess the question that I have for you, though, is that even in the in, in the light of how brilliant you have done the transition, how brilliant everybody has done the transition, there are still those fans out there that are calling for, oh, it's got to go back, it's got to go back. The ones that are just terrified that you've moved their cheese somehow, <laughs> and and the world is going to explode. But for you, as the character and as the the person who is carrying this forward, what what is your opinion? I mean, do you like where it's gone, or do you do you sometimes throw back and say, "Hey, you know, it would be fun to be back in that place"? I mean, I, I just got to throw the question out for you to let you answer. I think I know it already. <laughs> yeah, I no, I I'd, I'd, I'd never look back. I mean, it's yeah. uh, I think it's great. I think they handled it really well. I mean, conceptually, I was nervous. Uh, conceptually, I was like, ah, mm, this could, this, I didn't want it to seem like some sort of trick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And if it goes back, it sort of just feels like a trick. Right. Like, oh, we, you know, went down the wrong road and now we're back to where we should be. And it just feels like a stall. You know, like you get yep. two or three episodes out of it and then you're like, well, what was the point of that? Um, so I really like that things change. And actually, it's made for a tighter group. Like, you know, everyone who, who went back in time and came back, it's sort of, you sort of have this camaraderie about you. And, um, I love the shift. I, I think, I mean, making Fargo head of GD, oh, yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, just, it's like, oh, great. Like, everything just sort of got turned on its ear in a really cool way. So I like it. I like what they've done. I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head absolutely 100% in that if it goes back now, it will feel like a trick. And that yeah. the the fact that they you were brave enough to move forward to the same say, nope, we just blew everything up and we're going forward with it from here is just, that's just ballsy television and you just have to appreciate it for that. Yeah. I was, I was impressed with the network. I mean, it's so cool that when the writer's strike happened way back when, um, there was no money for anything. Like you remember all the, all the big networks were sort of pulling back and mm-hmm. they were being canceled or like, 
And the result of that for us on our end means they're not creating any new shows. So during that time period, it was sort of all eyes on Eureka at mm -hmm. the network, which is just awful, right? Because you, you have everybody in there <laughs> yeah. sort of going, I don't know about this plot thing. I don't know. <laughs> this. So the second that ends, you know, and all of a sudden they start making all these shows, which you're seeing now, like Alphas comes on this summer. Um, it, these shows that were sort of in the pipe. And all of a sudden they were sort of like, yeah, that's good. No, you, you want to go back in time and then not change anything? Yeah, that's fine, fine. We're busy. We're over here doing this new show. Right <laughs> yeah. So I, it's nice that the money sort of affords us the latitude to, you know, um, change it. So now that Carter and Allison, mm -hmm. kind of spoilers for their, I mean, people, if you haven't caught up, <laughs> catch up with the program. It's yeah, time, uh, yes. So now that they're together and there's really nobody standing in their way again you know because during the beginning of season four there kind of was because there was mm -hmm. still that triangle but now we don't really necessarily have that triangle that that makes for an interesting dynamic between between you two as characters correct yeah i mean i don't know what your relationships are like but any relationship that i've ever been in with someone there are two people standing in the way of, of, of progress. <laughs> yeah yeah all, sure. all times yeah, that's true. Children do count as, as standing in the way, I guess, sometimes. Yeah, I guess. Well, and I, 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 I still tend to think that, uh, yeah, it, it's it's TV relationships. It, it can't be that easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, the cool bit about it, what, what I like what they've done is, it, is they haven't sort of made it saccharine. They haven't sort of made it like, you know, every day is golden day, you right. know, in Eureka. And every day it's, it's th these characters, and particularly with the stuff we're shooting now, they have real problems, and they make real mistakes um, with you know, big decisions in their life and sort of the way it goes usually, mm -hmm. you know, everyone always says, you know, Oh, when you find the right person, it's, it's just easy. That's <laughs> a lie. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like when you find the right person, it's work as well. So it, it's nice to sort of see the writers wrote in a ton of the work that you have to do, you know, like you, she has two kids. You can't just move right in. That's not, you know, you gotta, mm -hmm. that has to be a conversation. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, all that stuff happens. Okay. Yeah, and and poor Joe is is that Joe really, Morton's character? Oh, that gonna, I feel for her. Is that gonna? Is oh, she for, gonna? For, is for she gonna her, finally yeah. get uh, get some love this season? Yeah, that's I mean, good. they really beat her up, yes, poor Erica. I feel awful. bad. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. I mean, the good news is yes, there is a there is a silver lining for Erica's character. Good, and um, it's it's all good. But it takes a long time. Again, I mean, they really stretch it, which is nice. I, I hate it on shows when. It sort of goes from zero to sixty in about a second. Yeah, and you're like, oh, so you're sleeping together now, and you get you're just a couple, and then you'll break up in three episodes, and that's the the arc, you know. <laughs> right, and that kind of um, that kind of goes, you know, with Joe Joe Morton's character, well, Joe Henry, Morton, yeah, you right. know, that all of a sudden, wow, you got a wife, and and it doesn't work out quite how he thought it might possibly. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. I mean, he, he's I mean, talk about a strange character arc for him over the years. He like. You know, first crazy girlfriend who, who, what was it? Like, her memory got wiped and she got stolen by another guy. And yeah. then she's a robot and she comes back and dies. And now he's got, like, strange new love that he's working on. So, yeah, he's got a hell of an arc. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Joe, Joe, this week we got something great for you. And he's like, he's like, oh, great. What now? What now? Really? Exactly. So what I mean, the cool thing about Joe, though, the cool thing is that he's so good at sort of what he, what he does and what he brings to it that all this stuff he makes he's made anyway into probably one of my favorite relationships. I like, um, you know, a relationship that's coming up that you guys are going to find out about. And I, and I like, um, his relationship with Tembi grace. I think it's a really sweet, really genuine relationship. So it's a, it, it's great that we got the whole cast knocked out, but what's in store for your yeah, character? Your character this, true. We got to give about you some time here. What's up what, with Jack? Yeah. Absolutely. What's up with Jack? Um, well, I guess, I guess, I guess it's a good time to say like this sort of, this season that we're coming up to now, it's all about basically Eureka going to space. Mm, right. It, this, this project that, you know, they want to go to Titan and the best and the brightest are going to go. And so what it does to all the couples in town are sort of who's going, what does it mean? It's a two year project. Whoever goes is going for two years. Wow. So, you know, all these couples are sort of going, well, it's a dream to go but maybe both of us can't go. Um, mm -hmm. And sort of, you know, my plot line plays into that and Henry's plays into that and everyone's sort of, you know, um, on pins and needles finding out who's going to go on this thing. So there's a little bit of that. And um, also things don't go so smoothly sometimes. And that's about all <laughs> no. I can say about that. No. Eureka, things really? don't go smoothly? I can't imagine. It's true. Television in general really fraught with conflict. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it would be pretty boring. It'd be like the vanilla oatmeal show otherwise, you know? It'd be like, same thing every week. Oh, hey, look, vanilla oatmeal. Yum. Exactly. That's right. Oh, man. I cannot wait for this show to come back. I'm I, so I'm, excited. I am so excited. I it's, always look well, forward. Honestly, it's yeah. the best stuff we've, we've done. We're really proud of it at this point. It's sort of like we sort of, sort of finally figured it out, and it feels it feels weird that, like, the stuff we're shooting now, you don't see until, like, literally next year. That's mm. a weird feeling. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's the way that goes. That's the way it is. And I guess, you know, you know, oh, man, we're out of time, aren't we? We are out of time. It's, <laughs> it's so no, sad. You long-winded what else? Oh, I can't I know. It. It's terrible, isn't it? We're, we'll we're we'll actually fire a quick question. We'll, we'll, we'll get another one in. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> well, Colin, okay. it's been a very great pleasure talking with you, and we would love to talk to you again very we're, soon. Very soon, definitely. Yeah. We can't, you know, we can't do this every year. we got to do it more often, Absolutely. definitely. Yeah, call, call, call me anytime. We can set it up. It's so easy to do, so anytime you guys want it, we can do it. Awesome. Excellent. I love that. All right, okay. Eureka, you check know, it out, folks. You know where yeah. it's at. You know what time it is. You know we, we've been talking about it for days, uh, weeks, weeks months, months, years. So, yeah. All right. We'll Go be back it. with more Slice of Sci-Fi right after this. What if Queen Victoria traveled in airships instead of a carriage? Now that's history with a steampunk twist. Imagine books where the Victorian age has technology that's advanced, but powered by the science of steam. The possibilities are endless and the stories unforgettable. 2011 is proving to be an explosive year for these clockwork creations. And Carina Press has plenty of titles to suit the adventurous reader. Put a little steam in your stories. Start by downloading our free ebook novella at carinapress.com. Performing analysis. Hello there, this is Geordie in uh, London. I was uh, I like listening to your show. I've never rung in before, but uh, you know I like listening to the debate about 3D. Um, I know you guys are really down on it, and um, I am too. And I couldn't put my finger on why. But um, you know what? A friend of mine. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and he said, "Well, I just don't like being told what to look at." And that's, you know, that kind of hit yeah. the nail on the head for me. It was like, yeah, I don't like being told what to look at. So um, I think you guys are right. I think the, us children of the 60s, um, maybe 70s, I don't know, uh, mm. we just have this rebellious streak and we don't like being pointed at things <laughs> and told we're <laughs> supposed to like them. Okay. Nice to talk to you and uh, see you soon. Bye. Well, and, and there's something yeah. about yeah. this comment that really just rung true with me because not on just that level, right. not on just the, the, the single plane of what he's talking about, but not in the, in the whole way that huh. the 3D filmmaking has to be done in that mm. this is what you, they want you to see. Mm-hmm. Well, so uh, initially, like, gut reaction to that is, yeah, right? But mm-hmm. the whole point of filmmaking is to tell people what to look at i mean shots are framed exactly. and things are written in such a exactly. way as where you're supposed to focus so mm-hmm. i guess maybe it's just more egregious with with more in your face more let's get a I don't know. let's get a fresh opinion because we have ben who's, okay. who's new so go ahead ben what do, you, what do you think man i keep thinking back to when i saw tron legacy um when i first saw it in 3d and what i really didn't like about it is that if i wanted to uh really take in what what was happening? I had to l- turn my head. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Everywhere I was looking, it's like I I couldn't take in. I mean, we saw you know you see it on the big yeah. screen. I couldn't use my peripheral vision. Yeah. So huge, no the whole true. idea of the 3D is that it's supposed to be immersive. Well, that's not it's immersive. Not. not if I'm doing this. I mean, that is that is the ultimate in tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. And yes. yet, with when I saw it again in in regular, you know, and and, and on Blu-ray, it's like you know I can just let the whole thing kind of come in, wash I mean, over you. And, and, exactly. But I'm still focused on what is the. Uh, center point what what what's the, the the main action of the story i can still focus in on that but i can take in the entire en- environment at the same time so got, that's that's my opposition to 3d i, I got okay. this seriously when i was uh was re-watching avatar and mm. i had seen avatar the last in 3D. year Bender, right yeah no yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i would seen this i i'd seen it in the film in, in the theater in 3d several times and then i actually watched it at home in 2d and i went wow i did not realize all the stuff that was going on the peripheral in pieces. the back yeah. 
until I got it out of the 3D. Okay. And then I really was able to take in the movie for a whole. Well, and here's the interesting thing, too. Um, real fast, before I let you to you know, because I know you have a point to make on it because you're a film guy. Um, in Outside of the U.S., 3D is a big, big right. business, and it's very popular. Uh, the U.K., we got a, a listener sent us a nice email mm-hmm. from the U.K. who said, uh, it's great here, and people are just eating it up like crazy. But again, I think they're also where we were originally yes. with right. it, and now we're in the uh, like overdose stage. Okay, okay. So, okay. La- last point last to know point, no. before we got to go here. I think the 3D, uh, the issue with the 3D is really the same conversation as the sex and violence conversation. It's a matter of does it fit? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. 3D up. boobs. I keep going back to up. yes. Wow, Noah. Man, again. now you give us a bunch of stuff to think about. Uh, again, with the logic and stuff. I mean, wow. that's why he's Padawan. Soon we'll teach you not to use logic. <laughs> this is not the logic you're looking for. You have to be, you have to be edgy and reactionary yeah. like yes. us. Yes. You have Bitter. to make people angry like Jaded. Brian. That's right. Angry. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with more of this jaded, angry talk next week. <laughs> Thanks so much. So- Pretty soon he'll be insulting people and spouting spoilers left and right. There you go. It'll happen.